Hello all, it's Jarrett Moore again here with the Enterprise DNA team. Back with a follow-up video from my previous video called Getting or Choosing Your Color Scheme. A link to that video will be in the description below. Here's another overview of my Power BI entry to one of the most recent Enterprise DNA challenges on the forum that we're having. Great content and I've learned a lot through all of these challenges. Can't wait to start some more. Here's a little overview of my entry for this challenge, but why don't I take you over to the Enterprise DNA forum and show you this is the link to where you can find my full write-up on my entry for this challenge. Now, as you scroll down here, I provide link or uh, pictures to all of the slides that are throughout my report. Um, even Sam had some comments on here for my entry. Um, then if you go down here, you'll see my full write-up um, on, on how I choose my, my logos, how I came about with my data model, um, all the measures that I put together, um, and then my full write-up here. So I'll let you review that at your earliest convenience. But right now, let's head back on over to Microsoft Power BI. So once I have my color, key, color schemes picked out for Power BI and implement it into uh, my model, the next step that I do is I create the page background for each one of these slides using PowerPoint. And I'm gonna show you that technique here very shortly, but as you see, if you go over here to the formatting pane and go down to the page background, you'll see that the background for this page is a saved photo that I have saved to my computer. What's great about this is when you click up here, normally where somebody would enter a text box or an image right here for this logo or this line right here, these are all implemented in the following strategy that I'm gonna show you in PowerPoint. All right, I have PowerPoint opened up now. I'll let you see this slide right here. This is the finished product of what we will have after I finish the, com the complete process of showing this step-by-step -step process. First thing that you do here is go up to the top here and you'd insert a new slide. In this case, we're gonna choose a blank slide. Once I have that blank slide, what I'm gonna do now is go over to Shapes and I'm going to insert a rectangle into the screen here and just fill this up as much as I can on the screen here. And then we're just going to take this and go out to the very edge of the screen here of the PowerPoint slide. As I continue doing that, first thing that I'm going to do here is change the background here to match the slide from here. So what you're going to do here is right click and on the outline, this is what I like to do first and choose no outline. Because if you choose, if you leave an outline there on your finished product, you'll see this blue border around that, and we don't want that to show up on our PowerPoint or on our Power BI slide. So the next step is I'm actually going to change the color of this slide to match the one in the example above. So if you go to the fill button here and click on more fill colors, what I've already done is just save the hex codes to a separate file. What I'm going to do is copy that dark blue background, paste it in here to the hex area, tab out of it, hit OK. Now we have the background to match what we want our slide to look like. All right, the next step that we're going to do here is we're going to insert that logo. So if I click the insert button here, click on pictures from this device, then we're going to see here, if I go over to my desktop and I go to the challenges and I go to the right folder here and I see my logo here and then I insert the logo, it's going to insert it there. What I'm going to do is resize that logo. We're going to take it and put it up towards the very top of the screen. Finish resizing it a little bit here. That looks great. Next step that we're going to do here is insert a text box. So all you would do is go here, insert and then we go over and insert a text box from here. But to keep things moving in this video, what I'm gonna do is go up to the finished product and I'm just going to copy this and paste it in our current slide. Make sure I get that to where I like it here on the screen. So that looks good. 
that finishes our, our next step here. And then the last step is we're gonna add that gold line that you see in the previous example. In order to insert that line, all you do is go up to the insert tab again here, and we're going to insert another shape, and we're gonna choose a line. And on this, we're going to just run that line clear across our screen here till we see it at the very end there. And once we're happy with that, that line, all we do is click there. And then once this line is, is highlighted here, what I like to do is go up to the shape outline. And from there, we can choose the color. And what I would do before I choose the color is go to the weight so we can get a thicker line because this is not very thick of a line to show in our slide. So what I do usually is I choose a four and a half point. And then the line's a little bit crooked here. I understand that. So we're going to straighten that up a little bit. Now what we're going to do is change the color from this blue to that gold line that we have there before us. So if I choose this right here, that's already pre-selected. Now we have our slide the way that we want it. Now the next thing to do here is we have to select all of these items that are on this page here and then group them. So what we do is I'll go ahead and click on the line right here. I'll click on the, holding down the control key, I'll click on the logo. And then I'll also hit hold down the control key and click on the patient scheduling text box that we entered. Okay, so once we have everything selected here on the screen, and, and selected here on the screen, what we're gonna do next is we're going to group this. So if you right click on the screen here and click on group, this is actually gonna group everything together. So then our next step that we're gonna do is actually just save this as a file or save this as a picture. So if I click on save as picture and go over to the correct folder and we'll just call this one for testing purposes, testing one, two, three. I'll save that file right there. And then now we have a screen, now we have the slide um, and this, the picture saved on the computer the way we want it. The next and final step is we're gonna head back over to Power BI here. And I've already entered a blank page. And then all you do in order to enter that saved picture is you just go over to the formatting pane. And normally when this shows up, a lot of times the transparency is set at 100. You'd want to make sure that you change that to zero so that when we add the image, it shows up correctly. So if I click on the add image button and then choose that testing one, two, three file that our picture that we just saved and hit open. And you can see it, it doesn't look right initially. But once we go back over here to the formatting pane where it's the image fit, you have to select fit. And now you can see that we have this great background for our slide here. Like I said before, I really, really like this technique. This is what I do for each one of my slides in all of my Power BI reports. And what's great about this again is that you don't have that issue of clicking anywhere on these icons and something showing up irregular on your screen. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video, but before you leave, make sure you hit that like button below and make sure if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Enterprise DNA YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of our exciting content in the days to come. Thanks and have a great one.